In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to prepare an input file for the magma chamber simulator. We're going to prepare an input file for a fractional crystallization run, so if you need to prepare one for a more complex run, such as an AFC, RFC, or RAFC run, those will be covered in later tutorials. If you have not already installed the magma chamber simulator on your system, please close out this video and refer to our other tutorial on installation of the MCS and its folder structure. So the first thing we need to do is open up the input file. In order to get to that, we need to navigate to our finder window. Again, if you're not quite familiar with the Mac, that's down here in the bar and it's a little happy face. From there, we can navigate to our documents folder and then into our MCS folder. Now our input files are located here in this folder called input and output, and yours should come preloaded with some. You'll notice that there is this general one at the bottom, and that's called prototype MES. That's just a general input file that you can type over and use. But because it does not begin with MES underscore, it actually won't pop up when you're running the magma chamber simulator, so it's not an option to use. So that's the file where you can input your own information if you want to make your own MES files. But for right now, we do have some preloaded for you, and we're going to open up this one called MEFs FC1. And I'll go through and explain the different parts of the file. So let me zoom in here just a bit so you can better see what's going on. So the different regions of the input file are coded by color. This blue box is the first one, and this contains our global system variables. The magma chamber simulator is made up of three subsystems, the magma subsystem, the wall rock subsystem, and the recharge subsystem. Each has its own separate input, but these systems in the blue box, these are system variables that apply across all three subsystems. So we're going to set them first. The first global parameter we have is here in row two, and it's called FM0. This is the minimum mass fraction of liquid that must accumulate in the wall rock subsystem in order to trigger assimilation. Since we don't want any assimilation to occur in this run, we can go ahead and set this value to one. Essentially what this is doing is telling the magma chamber simulator that it has to melt 100% of the wall rock before assimilation can be triggered. And we know this is unrealistic. We're never going to have enough heat for that to happen, so it's a surefire way to turn assimilation off. The next global parameter we have are the excluded phases. These are, as the name implies, phases that are excluded from all three subsystems. Now, an easy way to input these excluded phases is to do it actually directly from the magma chamber simulator. So in order to do that, we can go ahead and navigate back to our documents folder into the MCS folder structure. And we need to navigate back to this MCS VBL code folder and open up our MCS file. Uh, remember, that's this MCS underscore phase EQ underscore 2019, whatever version you may have. So once we open up the MCS, remember we need to enable macros. And then we're going to need to route Excel to the MCS folder structure before we can actually get to using the interface. So we want to get to this bottom button here that says excluded phase help. If we click on this, it brings up this user form and that has a list of different mineral phases that can be excluded. So for example, if I wanted to exclude spinel and tritomite from all three subsystems during my run, I could click here on spinel and click the tritomite box as well. Then I click the copy to clipboard button. This automatically closes the user form and you can exit out of the magma chamber simulator. So remember, don't save it. And now we're back to our MES file. Click on cell B3. And I usually right click and I paste special uh, just to paste those excluded phases in. So I want to avoid any sort of formatting issues that might occur if I were to just control V. 
Now you can also type these in by hand, but by using this function on the Magma Chamber Simulator interface, uh, you can make sure that you don't have any typing errors. Uh, this can also be helpful if you're not sure what the different phases are that are available to be crystallized out in melts or the Magma Chamber Simulator. So if you'd like to type the phases in by hand, you'll notice that one, they're all in lowercase, uh, two, they also must be spelled correctly, and three, if you're excluding more than one phase, they must be separated by a caret symbol without any spaces. If these criteria are not met, the magma chamber simulator won't be able to recognize the excluded phases and they won't be excluded from your run. Uh, the third parameter is pressure and that's given here in bars, fairly self-explanatory. So I want to run my model at 1.5 kilobar, uh, again, because melts takes in pressure in bars, so does the magma chamber simulator. So I need to type in 1500 bars here in cell B4. Now you'll notice that I'm not touching anything in column A or column D. Those need to be left the way that they are. The magma chamber simulator will actually read the text in columns A and D. So make sure that when you're changing values in these input files, you're only changing values for column B or F and beyond. Columns A, C, D, and E must be left absolutely alone. The next global parameter is labeled enthalpy convergence steps. This is the number of steps that occur in an isenthalpic calculation, and those calculations only occur when other magmatic processes are modeled in addition to fractional crystallization. But the magma chamber simulator still does need a value for this, so let's leave it at 30. You can set this parameter anywhere from 10 to 100, but through rigorous testing, we found that the sweet spot is 30 enthalpy convergence steps. So I would really just recommend sticking with that value unless you really feel a need to change it. Our final global system parameter is oxygen fugacity. That's a measure of the redox conditions in the system. And you'll notice that over here in column F, uh, let me scroll over, and there are a couple helpful hints here. All right, expand that a little bit. So in column F for uh, each row, we do have these helpful hints listed if you're not quite sure what needs to go in where and you don't care to go back through this entire video. So here in column F, uh, in F6, we have the acceptable standard input values for the different oxygen fugacity buffers that are available in standalone rhyolite melts. Because the magma chamber simulator is built upon rhyolite melts, we employ the same standard buffers. And so we can choose between none, QFM, nickel nickel oxide, iron wustai, and so forth. But again, they need to be spelled exactly as they are given here, all in lowercase. And in the case of QFM, melts has it listed as FMQ. So we need to type in FMQ if we're going to be employing that particular oxygen fugacity buffer. But for this run, we want to run at the nickel nickel oxide buffer. So instead, we're going to type NNO into the cell. And again, if it's not input exactly as given in cell F6, the magma chamber simulator will not be able to interpret the input file, and so it won't be able to complete the run. So now that we've covered our global system variables, we can move on to the magma subsystem. And that's given here next in the green box. Our major oxides are listed in the same order as they are in standalone melts, so this format should be pretty familiar already. And just like in standalone melts, we want to make sure that our hydrous compositions are normalized to 100 prior to a simulation. I generally do this in standalone melts just because I like to constrain the liquidus and solidus temperatures for each subsystem before I even put my input file together, but of course this can be done in Excel as well. You'll notice that to the right, we have this renormalization schematic over here in columns F and G. So if you put some value in column F, it will come out in column G, renormalized. For example, if I were to change the weight percent of water in this composition to two, you'll notice that I get a new output composition renormalized to 100 weight percent in column G. Uh, now, after you've renormalized co your composition, if you don't use standalone melts to renormalize, you can just copy these values and then paste them uh, because they're kept in the same order. And again, I like to paste special 
and then paste the values just to avoid any sort of possible confusion in Excel with formatting. We can undo that. And now after we've put in our starting composition for the magma, uh, the next parameter we have is the starting temperature, and that's here under T start. It doesn't really matter what we put in here because the magma chamber simulator will always start at the liquidus. But I like to help the MCS out a bit and give it a temperature that I think is reasonably close to where the liquidus might be just to give it a better jumping off point from its initial guess. Again, if you're unsure what a reasonable liquidus and solidus temperature are for each of your compositions, I would highly recommend running each of them through standalone melts just to get those values first. I find that although doing this is an extra step, it will avoid having to redo a lot of runs because perhaps your composition isn't quite right, or you're not really sure what the solidus temperature for the wall rock would be. Now, of course, you could just do an FC only run in standalone melts, but we're going to do it in MCS because the phase equilibria output file for this is the input file for the MCS trace elements engine, and that's really very useful. The next parameter in our magma subsystem is our temperature decrement, or delta T. That's going to be in cell B30. This is the number of degrees in between each equilibration step in the run. So for example, let's say that the liquidus temperature for a composition is 1050 degrees. If my delta T is 20, the next equilibration step that is output will occur when the magma composition is at 1030 degrees. And after that, the magma composition will cool another 20 degrees to the next equilibration temperature of 1010 degrees, and so on and so forth. So in the magma chamber simulator, the end of a run occurs when the magma and wall rock subsystems reach thermal equilibration. Depending on your starting masses, compositions, temperature, the set delta T, and many other parameters you choose, this can have the capacity to take a really, really, really long time. And if you're not in need of data at temperatures near the magma wall rock equilibration temperature, you can use these hard stop functions we've added here in rows 31 and 32 to terminate the runs prematurely. So say maybe I'm only interested in olivine fractionation or other high temperature processes, and I'm not really concerned with things that are happening near the solidus of this composition. I could stop the run at say, you know, 850 degrees. And what will happen is when the magma composition drops to any temperature lower than 850 degrees, the run will completely terminate. Now, in addition to setting this hard stop temperature, uh, the newest version of the magma chamber simulator also has this hard stop melt mass in the magma. Uh, this is the magma chamber simulator stopping when the mass of the liquid reaches some number of grams. Now, because there's 100 grams initially in the subsystem, we can think of this sort of as a percentage. So if you wanted to terminate the run when there's 6% melt in your magma left, you can put 6 grams, and then it'll stop when there's 6 grams of melt left in the magma subsystem. And that wraps up our magma subsystem parameters. So what's really nice about this newest version of the magma chamber simulator is that if you're only interested in doing fractional crystallization, uh, at this point, we've completed our input file. We can leave the pre-populated values in the rest of the boxes, because the magma chamber simulator now has a workaround uh, for the wall rock prime step. We don't need to be concerned about what's in the wall rock composition or in the recharge composition uh, because the magma chamber simulator doesn't even consider it. It, won't, it will know you don't want assimilation. So again, if you're not doing anything with assimilation, you don't need to perform the wall rock prime step and you don't need to fill out anything further. Uh, but if you do need information on the wall rock subsystem, you will need to perform that prime step. Uh, we'll address that or do that in later tutorials that could concern assimilation. So we can go ahead and close this out, but before we do, don't forget to save your input file. Uh, MES files need to be saved in this input and output folder. So we can go ahead and save as. And just to save it as something else, we'll call it MES underscore FC underscore two. So that concludes our tutorial on how to prepare an MES input file for a fractional crystallization only run using the magma chamber simulator. In our next tutorial, we'll actually use the magma chamber simulator to perform this FC only run.